what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this three dimensional block of wood and I'm going to draw it orthographically. So in other words, I'm going to take this three dimensional image and I'm going to draw it in a series of two dimensional views. To begin this process, what I would do is I'd actually go ahead and measure out all of the key features of this block. So to speed things up, here are the dimensions. Now that we've gotten our dimensions, our next step is to determine which of the faces or edges are going to be which of the three views. Now we've got the top view we need to draw, otherwise known as the bird's eye view, the front view, uh, and also the side view. It truly doesn't matter which face we're going to call uh, our front view, um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to say that the yellow face is going to be our front view. The red face is going to be the top or the bird's eye view. And the blue side is going to be our right view. So essentially, the object is oriented like this. So when we do a three view orthographic drawing, we wanna actually start with our front view. In our demo, we've decided that the yellow face is our front view. So we're gonna draw everything we see painted in yellow. Now, when we draw the front view, we always wanna keep it on the bottom left-hand corner of the page. To keep things proportional, we're going to make one of these little squares half an inch. So I'm going to place this corner of the block right over here on the page. And because from this point to this point here, it's three inches, that means I need to move six squares to the right. The reason why it's six is each square is half an inch. Now I know that this block here is one inch thick. So that means I would do two squares up. So what I've gone ahead is I've drawn this section here. Now you'll notice that this section here is a little bit sunken. It's further or deeper than this section here. So the way that we would illustrate that is that we would draw a line over here. And this line represents this seam that exists over here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this section. So if I am here on the drawing, then I am here in real life. And as you can see, I need to move two and a half inches to the right. So I'm going to illustrate that in my drawing. That's five squares to the right. And of course, you want to be using a ruler as you do this. The next thing you're going to notice is that there's a hole here. So we got to go ahead and draw that hole. We can see that the center of the hole is half an inch from the bottom. So that's one square from the bottom. And it's one and a quarter inch from this edge over here. So this is this edge. I need to move one and a quarter to the left. So here's half an inch, one inch. This is one and a half, one and a quarter is right there and the center of the hole is half inch from the bottom, so half inch from the bottom. So next, I wanna figure out how big this hole is. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure the diameter of that hole, and I'm seeing a quarter of an inch. Since the diameter of this hole is a quarter inch, and one of these squares is half an inch, my hole needs to be half a square. Feel free to use a circle ruler or a compass to draw that hole, but I'm just gonna hand draw it 
just to move on. Now that we have drawn the yellow front view and we've represented all the features, including the hole, we're going to go on ahead and move on to our next view, which is the top view, otherwise known as the bird's eye view. Here, when we're drawing the top view, we're going to draw everything that we see that's painted in red. Now, this is important. When you're drawing the top view, you always have to draw it directly above the front view. So in this case, the front view is here. So we actually have to draw the top view in this section here. If you've drawn the top view in this section here or in this section here, you've screwed up. So make sure the top view is directly on top of the front view. Now, when we're doing the top view, you want to grab a ruler or a straight edge. So here's my ruler. And we want to find every single vertical line in our front view. So vertical lines are lines that go up and down. So here's a vertical line, here's a vertical line, and here's a vertical line. We want to use that ruler. We want to lightly draw those vertical lines upward onto the page, like so. So I'm just lightly ghosting this line in. And I'm going to do the same with this vertical line here. Again, you want to be really, really light with this. And so these three vertical lines, they're called projection lines. As you get better with them, you don't even need to draw them and you can erase them afterwards, but they'll help you figure out where you're going to place your top view. Now I'm going to start by drawing this corner here. And honestly, it doesn't really matter how far apart the top view is from the front view, but I've counted out my spaces and I don't want to run out of room on my paper. So I'm actually going to draw this corner right here, three spaces above the front view. So I'm actually going to start my corner right there. Now, the reason why I'm starting my corner at this point exactly, and not one space to the left, two spaces to the left, or why I'm not starting the corner to the right over here, is because this corner, the bottom left-hand corner of my top view, is exactly the same corner as this top left corner of my front view. They're the same point. So what I want is I want my top view or my bird's eye view to line up with my front view. So this corner here has to line up with my front view. Now you'll notice that the distance from here to here is actually the same distance as here to here. So from this corner, I would actually need to move to the right three inches. So on my drawing, that's six squares. And that brings me over here. Now, from this corner, I'm going to move up two inches. So in this case, it's four squares on my drawing. Now I'm over here. To get to this corner here, that's two and a half inches, otherwise known as five squares. So what I'm going to do is draw five squares to the right. And that represents two and a half inches. I'm going to draw this line over here. And that's six and a half inches. So I have to travel up 13 squares. So that brings me right to the corner of this slot. And much like our front view, you'll notice that there's a slot here and that this section in here is actually sunken in. It's a little bit deeper, but we can't actually see that when we're looking straight down from the bird's eye view. All we see is this individual seam over here. So all we'll draw is the seam.
At this point, I just uh, connected this line to this line here. Now our slot is half an inch wide, so that's one square to keep with our proportion. And again, there's the end of that seam, so I'm gonna actually draw that seam. And the distance from this seam to the top left-hand corner is one inch. So that means I need to travel up two squares. It's also one inch this way. So I'm gonna draw two squares here and I'm gonna connect and I'm going to connect the line. Now, if you were perceptive enough, you might have noticed that before we even drew the top view, we took the time to lightly draw all the vertical lines on the front view. Those were called projection lines. So you'll notice that there was a projection line here, a projection line here, and a projection line here. And you can see that they actually line up with key features in the top view. So for example, the distance from here to here, which is three inches, is surprise, surprise, the same three inches that we saw on the front view. This two and a half inch section here is again, surprise, surprise, the sunken section with the hole in it that we saw in our front view. So what you could have done to save you some time, instead of counting, instead of counting up six squares and five squares here, is you could have just actually used the projection lines to draw the features so that this lines up with this and the rightmost edge of the front view lines up with the rightmost edge of the top view. Now with the top view done, we're going to move on to the right-sided view, which would be this side, which is painted blue. When you're drawing the right view, which is this blue view over here, it's very important that you draw the right view directly to the right of the front view. So this is my top view, this is my front view. So it needs to be directly to the right in this section here. The right view also needs to line up with the front view. Meaning, if you drew this blue right view up here, you've done it wrong. The blue right view needs to be on the right side, but also lining up with the front view. So in this case, it actually needs to go on the bottom left-hand corner. And if you were doing a left view, which we're not doing in this drawing, it would need to be on the left side of the front view and directly lined up with the left view. I recognize this is confusing, so let me show you what I actually mean. So I'm gonna flip over so that I'm now looking at the right view, which is this view over here. And so before you start drawing out all the features like we did here, we wanna actually start by drawing those light little projection lines. This time, however, we're going to find every single horizontal meaning lines that move left and right, horizontal line from the front view, and we're going to transfer it to the right side. So I see a horizontal line here, so I'm gonna lightly trace that over there. I see another horizontal line here, so I'm just gonna lightly draw a projection line over here. Again, the purpose of the projection lines tell me the highest point of my right view. So the top, this top here, that is gonna be along this line here. And the lowest point of my right view, which is this line here, is gonna be along this line here. That way, the right view and the front view line up. Because my top view is exactly one, two, three squares away from my front view, I wanna make sure that my right view is also three squares away. So one, two, three. This corner here is going to start here. If my top view were five squares away, 
then I would make sure that my right view is five squares away as well. Make sure there's the same number of squares from here as there is from here. As we looked on our front view, this thickness is one inch. And because we rotated it, it's still the same thickness. I'm going to move one inch. Now the distance from here to here is two inches. So that's four squares on my drawing. There's a sunken part here. And as you've known from our front and our top view, although we can't see the sunken part in our right view, we do see this seam here. So we're gonna go ahead and just draw that seam. So now I'm here, I'm just gonna finish this up. The distance from this corner over to this corner is six inches. So that means that I'm going to need to move 12 squares to the right. So this corner is this corner. So I'm going to go ahead and move 12 spaces to the right. This is uh, one inch thick, meaning I need to move up two squares. So two squares from here. If I'm trying to figure out the distance between here to the edge of the slot, actually you can just uh, flip this up and look. That's one inch, so that's two squares to the left. We know the slot is half inch, so we know that it's gonna be here, but I do wanna know the depth. So what I'll need to do is I'll measure. That's a quarter inch. So since each square is half an inch, I actually need to go down half a square. The slot is one inch wide, one square to the left. And I just need to connect the line. And now, our right view is done. You can see that the right view lines up with the front view. So the very top of the right view is also lined up with the very top of the front view. The very bottom of the right view is also lined up with the very bottom of the front view. And also, each of the views are the same number of squares apart. So the top view over here is three squares away from the front view and the right view is three squares away from the front view as well. So let's call this method the basic method. Now we're nearly done um, our three view orthographic drawing. The last step is to draw hidden lines. But before I go on about hidden lines, I'm gonna show you another technique on how to draw the right view using the 45 degree bisector line. You'll find out how to do that in the next video. If you want to learn how to use hidden lines, go ahead and jump to the third video in our playlist.